loyalty and the passion is second to none. But it's not just that, it's the noise, it's the atmosphere, it's the feeling of belonging. A lot of the time you have personal problems in your own life. When you go to a Newcastle United game, that's an opportunity to forget everything. You know, it's not just the football club, it's a way of life for Newcastle United fans, and I think that's where it's always going to be. It's the closest thing I have to a religion. It's something to get behind. It's something to be passionate and care about when there's nothing really else like that, especially in a city like Newcastle where it really does unite the whole place. Yeah, it's, it's like football, Newcastle United. It dominates it our, life. our life. It is our life. It means everything. We've seen a lot of hardship with regard to the closure of a lot of industry, but with the football club, uh, there's been something to hold on to. We all identify really strongly with Newcastle as a city and a massive part of that is the football club. Without it, you wonder what we do on the weekends. I can't conceive of Newcastle without Newcastle United. It's the centre, it's the beating heart of Newcastle. The love that you've got for the club, it's like your second wife. And sometimes you need to kick your first wife out, have that second wife. You know, it's quite emotional even talking about it, really. It's almost like a drug. Newcastle United means everything to me. It's Newcastle United, you can guarantee whatever you think is going to happen, won't. Years, Newcastle fans went to away matches in big numbers. Initially, um, just to local local teams when they were playing in the Northern League, um, to other Northeast teams, um, and they would travel by either train or by uh, brake, which was like a horse and cart, horse and carriage. By the time they got to the cup finals, which was in the early 1900s. There would be at least 25,000 fans. And for many of them, it would have been like the first time they'd ever been outside of the region. So yeah, so away travel has been around since the beginning, really. I think there's something about being at an away game where um, you witness something that only a few thousand other fans of your club have seen live. So you remember them far more than you ever do any home games that you've gone to. It's like an us v them that you don't really get in many other parts of society these days and it's, it's quite primal and you're making as much noise for your lads and they're making as much noise for their lads. It's quite a, it's quite a unique experience. It, there's no other feeling in the world to me if we score a goal, especially away from home because the away supporters are a lot louder and that's why we get up at Apple's 5 in the morning to go up and get up and go because for that 10 seconds of joy for when we score a goal and win a game for me, it's just, it's just there. It's just, it's just, yeah. One of the things that people who go to matches week in, week out know is that obviously a huge part of why you're going is, is the result. It's to see the scores, it's to see the scores, it's to see a team do well. It's the, tr the, the tribalism around it, you know. Um, but particularly away games, it's, it's not just about what goes on in the pitch, you know. It's about having the chance to go away with your mates and I think that for clubs in the northeast, it's always a long journey more or less wherever you go and that actually while in some ways it is awkward it's a hindrance it costs more to get places takes time but also makes everything a bit of a, a bit of a journey you know a bit of an adventure so that's all part of it you know and I think that's maybe something that people who who've just seen games on TV and don't think about that maybe don't appreciate and maybe maybe miss out on we're the furthest team up north in England. We have to make a big trip every single away game. And, but the mm. thing is, and it doesn't help when a TV company decides to change it to God knows what time on a Monday night or a Friday night. So if you're putting that on at 8 o'clock on a Monday night, you're not mm. getting back till 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's not fair. The last time we had a home game on a Monday night was 2013. It's now 2019. Today we're off to Wolverhampton Wanderers. You know, it's a pretty middle of the road journey. Tony, what time do you think we should be back in Newcastle for tonight? 
woefully quartered at three. The coach left St James Park at 12 o'clock lunchtime, um, so it is obviously, it is tiring, it's, it's a long journey, um, but it's what you what you do for the, the club you, you love. I don't think you get many clubs in this country that would sell out with a support like we do, no matter where you go, no matter what night of week it is, it sells out. I've had to put a day's holiday in from work and obviously sit on a coach for a few hours to get down there. <laughs> so it's a long day, really. Um, we'll not be getting home till about three in the morning, then I've got to go to work tomorrow. It's a bit annoying because I've got to use holidays, only get so many a year, but it is what it is, and I get money from the right? so. Can't be too anything about it. Not us anyway. <laughs> Just gotta go with it. It seems like we've got every away game on telly, so the kickoff gets moved to a late kickoff or an early kickoff or Monday night or weekday. So we just put up with it now. But at the uh, start, it was quite annoying. Yeah. Puts you off going actually because yeah. you'd rather sit in the house and watch rather than like. But when we booked it, it was a mon it was a Saturday three o'clock kickoff, and then they moved it actually after we booked the tickets. There's no uh, train back after the game, so you have to either stay overnight or sort something out. So it's not great, really. Quite a lot of the teams in the Premier League, if they were put on a Monday night, they wouldn't sell it out. But if Newcastle are going, they know that we're going to sell it out regardless of what time it is. So it makes sense to put us on rather than one of the other teams in the Premier League. We're, it's, it's a massive fan base and it's got the potential to be a massive club again. But what it needs is somebody to put money into it, my players. Everybody well, loves Newcastle. Everybody loves Newcastle. Yeah. Definitely. It's, well, you can tell by the gates on Saturday home games, 50 odd thousand there. And we're, we're what, fourth bottom now? Yep. But if this was a tour, it would still be 50 thousand there. I hope you get relegated soon. No, I hope not. I hope not. Mention that. I think we'll stay up, uh, and I think it's rough up here, so I'll stay up. If he goes at the end of the season, then it's going to be a bit more turmoil. I don't think that Newcastle fans want the world, really. It's just sort of that we'll compete and that we've got something to go away to on a Monday night and expect to win a game rather than going to Wolves, who were promoted last season, and really expect a defeat, in all honesty. Because all we've really known is Newcastle struggling. I mean, sort of mid-table towards the bottom, especially the last few years, relegation every few years, and it's just irritating, really, uh, considering how big we used to be. It's a struggle watching them at times. Like, oh, it's, it's painful it's to watch, like, it really is painful to watch. I've seen people come back on the coach absolutely distraught because they've travelled all day, and we're getting beat, and having to console people that are getting back on the coach. You can tell by the faces, they just, you know, you would think you had lost a family member half the time when people get back on the coach. They've travelled all that way, spent all that money, and they've got absolutely nothing to show for it. So, it, you know, it can be difficult at times, you know, because you've got to kind of keep people happy, you've got to keep people, you know, focused, and a lot of time you can be coming to to cry on. At the end of the day, like football, that was fans, it's nothing, so just that's why that's why there's a product there to be sold and we see it as a game and that's why we, we love it and uh, it's, it's our passion and it's why we come here and, and uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a way to get in there and start singing some songs and that. It would just be nice not to, ha not to have to travel, like take time off work, you know, come all this way on a Monday night and then go back to work the next morning. It's just thought of a fan getting here, so it's we've all been taught by car, a lot of them taught by bus. It's the cost as well, isn't it? And the, everyone had booked accommodation, travel, trains and that, and they got changed on Monday night, so a lot of people had to change their plans. They don't really care about if kids go or not, when they like, because like, we've got school in the morning, they don't care about that. And they don't care about what time we get back or whenever. We're up at four in the morning. Yeah. We'll be up. At, we'll be back at like three, four in the morning. We've got school the next day. I'll, I'll be up at seven o'clock. They know we're going to turn up regardless, so they just move it. Really, it's kind of like if they're making money, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter to them. It, they don't really care about the fans. That's what I think. And we have to travel the furthest as well, which is they don't take that into consideration <laughs> either. Like.
can tell it's a little bit despondent on the coach at the moment. Um, we had a decision go against us uh, deep into injury time and we should have left with three points. Um, and as you can probably tell, the reflection of that is spread out across the mood of the coach. This happens all the time when we travel long distances and we come away and we get beat uh, when it's a bit quiet. Um, but it's even worse when those points that you should have won are wrongfully <coughs> robbed, I suppose, and uh, the points are shared, but, you know, it's football. You can get over it quicker when you're at home because you don't have to travel for, yeah. like, four hours back. But it's like 10 minutes when you're right. home when it's a home game, whereas this, you're like sat on the coach, yeah, it just goes, coach over about it. Goes, over, goes over in your head thinking about it, everyone's talking about it, and it's just, it's a bit it's frustrating. But you just want the next game to come yeah. as quick as possible so you can get over this. Like. It's enjoyable it's not anyway. anyway. When, you, when you lose, I question whether I come again, but that always comes yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I pay all my money for, this is what I go to work for 40 hours a week, I love it. but. Like at the end of the day, like I don't really want to take holidays at work. At the end of the day, it's like two days holiday. Like those holidays can be spent somewhere else. I could be going somewhere on holiday. Could be going somewhere warm. But no, I'm here on a on a Monday night where it's minus one. Things like that. It's really cold at the end of the day. But you do it because you love it. It's... Like every Newcastle United fan, we've got to get ourselves back up again, dust ourselves off, and get ready for the next game because the players are going to need every inch of support and every decibel we can uh, raise for the next few games until the end of the season. The sad thing is that Newcastle are rubbish. It's fine to lose track of that in the emotion of being, like you say, in the relegation zone, and then you pull out three or four games and you cast a lot of rubbish. We, we don't have many shots, we don't score many goals. We'll have a negative goal difference. We're not one we're, class. we're one of the worst teams in the league, yeah. and it's very sad because I think Newcastle will be rubbish next season, and that's quite, it's, it's a shame because there's no need for it. And it affects a lot of people very negatively. I think it's just going to be bleak as usual, scrapping for relegation you know, yo-yo club. <laughs> um, I just think we haven't really got much future. It'd be nice to win a cup, because obviously we haven't won a cup for 50 odd years, so but I don't really know. It's, it's uncertain at the moment. Uh, I think, you know, what happens when you get relegated, when, when you do fall out of the Premier League is people will feel a bit down. You know, I don't know, um, there's never been any studies, but you'd imagine productivity might suffer a little bit in the sort of short term with the emotional drain. I'm, I'm sure it does. Um, Newcastle win, you go in, you know, you're in a great mood. You graft a bit harder, maybe. Newcastle lose, you just haven't got the energy, you know. More than that, I just think it, it brings in investment when the team's doing well. It brings, obviously, attention to, to the city and it raises the profile of the city, so you're more likely to get people coming here, businesses and workers and that sort of thing. I defy anyone to walk into a place of work in Newcastle on a Monday morning and not have someone say, see the match? And it's the same on a Friday, like, how do you think we'll get on this weekend? It's, it's the last thing you think about before you leave work before the weekend. It's the first thing you're talking about when you come back on the Monday. And it's just, I don't know if it's like that anywhere else. I really feel like that's very unique to Newcastle, how far spread the involvement in the football club is. Football is a big part of the economy, particularly in parts of the UK where maybe other economic activity isn't as developed. And I think, you know, in some, particularly the small post-industrial towns of the North and the Midlands, it's a really core plank of the economy. And if you look at Newcastle, you see very similar things. And actually, I would argue probably just from the numbers we've seen, disproportionately football is more important in Newcastle than in most cities in the UK, both economically and as part of the social fabric. One of the reasons why football has so much importance in Newcastle is because it's part of the, you know, the working class culture that we've all grown up and with. And you have to, you know, these clubs, you know, came from work, you know, often from works teams, you know, 100 whatever years ago. And it's so ingrained as part of working class culture, which we see elsewhere being lost. Um, many aspects of it, the industry which often supported it, is gone and is changing. 
Yeah, I think that the fortunes of the club are probably quite closely linked to the, the, the fortunes of the city. For example, the Kevin Keegan era, so early 90s entertainers team on Newcastle were at the top of the Premier League. It was like a real boom time for the city. It seemed like everything was being regenerated. The quayside was regenerated and everyone just seemed to have a spring in their step. Newcastle were winning almost every week. The vision in the city was completely different. Suddenly it was the sky's the limit. You know, we went from being a, a laughing stock in the second division to, you know, getting into Europe and going all around Europe and challenging the Cups, almost winning the league in 1996, coming close in 1997, getting in the Champions League. Since then, basically for us, for the majority of our football supporting lives, it's just been a club that's underachieved and I hate the cliche that Newcastle fans want titles and expect to be top of the league. That's not true. We want a club that tries and we just want a club that wants to be better than it was the, the year before. And it, it hasn't been that for such a long time that as Newcastle fans, that's probably the main issue we face. I do think we deserve more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just say, couldn't disagree more. You <laughs> Newcastle should be, you know, top six, in my opinion. That's the potential it's got. You've got to pay the money to get there. But not where they should be now, you know, they're scrapping against relegation. And that is a really sad sight to see as a supporter, as a journalist, as any any person in this city, it's sad to see them where they are. The club's stagnated over the last sort of 10 or, 10 or so years. Ten years ago, we were on a par or above clubs like Manchester City, uh, Liverpool, Tottenham. Um, we were competing on a level playing field with them. But because we've gone 10 years with little investment, the other clubs have um, just really stolen a march on us. We've become a kind of yo-yo club between the Premier League and the Championship. Um, and every season that we're in the Premier League, we're basically struggling to stay in it, struggling to survive. This is a club that's won, you know, the FA Cup sort of six times and, the, you know, the old first division four times. So fans would probably say, not sure they are successful, but, but I think firstly you have to look at the, the kind of commercial side of the game and probably if Newcastle are in the top 10, top eight of the Premier League, that's kind of where their economic model would suggest they should be. You know, 50,000 crowds get you there, but actually you look at sort of the, the bit top six, if we like, at the moment in the Premier League, their finances are still a level up from, from Newcastle's. And we know that wage bills drive success over the long run in football. You know, Newcastle's turnover last season was 178 million pounds and 24 million pounds of that came on match day. So you can only do so much, even with what the fans are putting in. If you have the TV appeal of Manchester United or Liverpool, you've always got an income stream that's going to make it hard, even for a club like Newcastle to compete. We always get shafted with the, the TV. Yeah. Um, sort of games moved, and some of the some of the decisions just haven't got the fans' interest at, at heart at all. Fourteen times in a row we've been away on a Monday night. That doesn't happen to anyone else in, in English football. The reason why Newcastle are chosen by the media companies will sell out. That's the first thing. Whatever game it is, no matter what night it is. And if it's a midnight kickoff, we'll sell it out. But it's also the audience figures are over. You're guaranteed a million, no matter what it is, whether it's the Wolves on a Monday night. It's definitely the case that um, the in-ground in experience is important for television. There's no question about that, that if the grounds were quiet, then there's a bit of atmosphere lacking that foreign viewers pick up on. And you know, when you're thousands of miles away, that, that's probably the thing you, you know about English football, if you like. So, so it may well be that that's part of the reason. I, th I think you know, Newcastle have probably, they probably do generate a good TV audience, but also they've been in um, sort of precarious situations for the last couple of seasons, you know, and Newcastle may be a bit sort of suffering 
from the, their support, but also probably it reflects where they've been in the table. And, and they are a big story, right? If a, a big club is in relegation trouble, that is a big story. And they've been a big story for the last couple of seasons, certainly. The impact of TV on fans, particularly Premier League fans, is, is huge at the moment because obviously... I mean, you're looking it's more than half the games are getting moved for away from Saturday at 3 pm for TV and so on and that has a particularly big impact for fans from the northeast and what this means is it's just very difficult and expensive to get to games obviously because say apart from having to put time off work for maybe Monday night games Sunday at 4 pm games whatever they may be you've also got the issue with ticket prices on trains where Tickets are quite cheap for in advance, so the temptation is to book your, your train travel early in advance and then TV moves the game and bang, you've lost you've lost that train ticket and it's wasted money um, and you have to pay to get a new train ticket. So these are all types of problems that we are trying to help overcome, um, but the football industry is addicted to the, the money that TV offers. All of us here put a fortune, like thousands, you know, it's got to be close to £10,000 a year, what we put in Newcastle United as fans travelling around the country, and it's almost like that's taken for granted. Well, there's a lot of sacrifice, especially the way supporters, uh, the money and the time they put into going and cheering on the team, the, the length of the journeys they have to make. And the, the thing is that for them, this is the love of their life. Although many of them may be married, uh, the partners may uh, not like to see them being away so much, they understand the fact that this is um, their reason for, for living, in a way. Well, well today's journey, um, we left uh, St. Jimmy's Park at 7 a.m. this morning. Um, I've personally been up since 5 a.m., so it was an early start for me. By the time we get back, we've probably covered, what, nearly 700 miles in total. Um, so it is going to be a long day. Um, by the time I get back, I'll just probably looking at 5 a.m., so start to finish, it's been probably a 24 hour journey. It's the longest trip in the Premier League, so that's simple as that really it's uh, not many people can do it obviously the longer journeys you get more of the dedicated fan on there on on the journey the trip down um, because doing a journey of this magnitude it takes a lot of dedication in my eyes we're the best fans in the league in the world so uh, nobody nobody else can do this nobody else would follow them 700 miles round trip yeah that was Eight hours on, on the bus. It is one of the hardest journeys because at the end of the day, you are literally just sitting there, just waiting to get there for 90 minutes of a game and that's it. And then you're on the bus home. You don't really know what to do on the way back. The result is everything. If you don't really get some it, you can get over it once you're back home. But on the journey home at the end of the day, it ain't that great. But hey ho, you do it. That's what you spend the 50 to 100 quid for it like to go every every game at the end of the day. To me, I think the, the fans are the lifeline of a club because without your fans, you've got really no one to follow you. Your, your stadiums will be empty. There'll be no atmosphere. And I think the, the team does play better when the fans are obviously behind them. And that's without us, I don't think there would be half the team of work. We'll follow them wherever, whenever. You make your plans, you think, oh, this one, I was going to go on the train. But then when I found out it was half past five, you kind of get the train back because if you're not into London in time, you miss the last train up. So you just think, oh, well, there's another one where it's going to be two, three, four o'clock before you get back in the house in the morning. But I haven't got work tomorrow, so I'm At the end of the day, I sacrificed my time. Like, at the end of the day, I didn't have to get up this morning. I work all week being shouted at, being stressed, everything like that. I just go away for a bit of freedom, but to release that shouting, that chanting, that singing, that cheering, gets everything, gets everything off your chest. Because at the end of the day, you can't express that at work, no matter how you may feel. So if you come away, it just gives you that release, gives you that anxiety break. It just gives you something to feed up, feed off, and at the end of the day, to look forward to. Hey!
season in the air championship so as you can see it rubs off on the fans and there's a hell of a lot of stress that's gone and um, the only thing we've got to hope for now is uh, Rafa Benitez signing on that dotted line and staying for another five ten years maybe and build a whole whole new regime first half of the season I was very very worried because um, I think we were second bottom or bottom at one stage um, and I think at that point you just you fear the worst the way Rafa was speaking was you know, very negative at that time. It was just a bad vibe around the club and the city. But as it's gone on and we've got more behind them too as well, because I always love the away games a lot, because I think the atmosphere with there being less fans there is a lot better at the away games or more vocal. But I've even noticed at home the last even few home games it's been singing to being there, the, the atmosphere's coming back. Very, very optimistic for a change. Like, to be honest, I've never ever went to a away game in a long while to think, you know what, we've got, we've got a good chance of not just winning, getting a couple of goals. Like, surely we've got to be scoring goals, surely we've at least got to be getting something from today. But it's Newcastle United, we'll never do anything the simple route, so I suppose we'll find out. Uh, we are all the way from Malaysia to uh, join to watch this match and we take uh, about a uh, 40 hours flight to come over here. It's a dream. It's a dream. Yeah, because I, I, I love, I start loving Newcastle is because at Alan Scherer and that was like 20 years ago. Maybe it's the time I have to travel to to Brighton and to make my dream happen. Maybe more than love, more than me. <laughs> worth it you get up this morning you think oh why am I bothering <laughs> but uh, once you get up you know you start getting yourself motivated for it yeah. you get in the bus um, you know a bit of a nap here and there but I think once you get a, a couple of beers in you you know um, have a bit, bit of banter with a few people um, just a massive part of the experience I'm not gonna say for one second the result doesn't matter because it does but at the same time like it's all about the deal it's all about the day experience. People don't realise how important this is like, to like 
us in the North East League, you know, I mean, we love our football team, we really do it, you know. People work so hard in the North East for, for what, for one 90 minutes a week at the end of the day. That's what I don't think a lot of people get, like, it's all right for some London clubs, it's all right for some Manchester clubs, but for us, we work so hard for sometimes so little. If you're a Newcastle supporter, you're just, you're that daft or loyal, whatever you want to think, like, you would go wherever you can and you can afford to and you've got time to do it, you do it. It's worth it no matter win, lose, draw. It's the longest journey. It's passion, it's pride, it's belief. That's what Newcastle stand for. Moments like this, you, you kind of you doubt yourself because it's been what, nearly 22 hours of a, a journey. But then when you wake up in the morning and you feel refreshed, you just look back and you think, yeah, it's all been worth it. It's an absolute pleasure. Oh, I'm off to bed. 